All right, hold all your comments about my mess in here to the end, but I wanted to go through a little bit of a scare that I had with my Mega Revo inverter. So I was getting my critical loads panel set up. So this was gonna be powered off of the load one output of the Mega Revo, where the grid output goes over there. So that's, that's a panel from the grid. This is gonna be a dedicated backup panel. And I was trying to pull these wires up. You can see that I've got a loop in them there. And uh, this one managed to come loose and of course contact the L2. And of course I had them on, stupid me, tripped the breaker because it was in bypass mode, the Mega Revo was. So that breaker tripped, which was feeding the Mega Revo or realistically, it was really the Mega Revo feeding the house at the moment. Then when I got everything turned back on, line one on the Mega Revo was no longer feeding the house. Line two is fine. Uh, I was not feeding as much to the grid as I wanted because I was only uh, feeding one side of the panel, not the other side. And <clears throat> when I started looking at here, I noticed that if I measured the output here, this is the critical loads output, right? Um, it was 141 volts on line one when I was in grid bypass mode. If I was in off-grid mode, it was fine, but in grid bypass mode, it was 140 volts. So I was still getting output to my critical loads panel. I figure worst case scenario, this is becoming an off-grid inverter instead of a uh, grid tie inverter. Then I started measuring, I went ahead and pulled the cover off and I realized it's open here and I should not be touching anything. So I'm gonna stand back here. And I noticed a whole bunch of relays and traces and all kinds of stuff in here. This is, after looking at all, this is essentially a board that is mostly just relays and inputs and connections and stuff, right? So you've got all of your your solar inputs, I'm sure those are the solar outputs back to another board. These are all relays for uh, grid connections and load output connections to be able to control when it's connected to the grid, not connected to the grid, feeding outputs. These are the inverter connections up here. So you've got inverter two, inverter one, and the neutral. So I started checking to see, okay, from the grid, where do I have 120 volts versus 140 volts? And I noticed that it was, it broke right here at this relay. So uh, this inverter, or this grid input here goes through here, through this relay, through this relay, through this relay, up to the inverter. And then this, this line here connects to it and goes over to the output, uh, the load output. And that relay was not connecting from the top to the bottom. So I pulled this whole board out and I uh, triggered that relay with 12 volts because they are 12 volt relays. Can you look at the side over here? Oh, not that side, here. This is what they are. You can see it's an HF167F and then the bottom says 12 HF, that's a 12 volt. So I was able to trigger it with 12 volts and it would, it would pop, but it would not connect top to bottom. So then I pulled the cover off and I was able to see that the contacts inside, um, you can see those, the shiny bits right there, is the contacts were stuck. Uh, I think they were actually stuck on, but maybe they were stuck on, but they had some junk in there so they couldn't actually connect. So what I should actually do is replace that. But for now, what I did is I cleaned the contacts up a little bit and it is working now. I am able to output to the grid, I no longer have that 140 volt scenario. Dodged a bullet there. I don't know if this is a scenario where, you know, a better inverter would have handled that scenario better, but honestly, I can't really fault it. I mean, I shorted the stupid outputs and obviously there's supposed to be a breaker here, which there is, but I shorted it before the breaker. I suspect what happened is that that breaker is going to be on, it should have been on already, right? Because I'm feeding inverter to the output and inverter to the grid in order to back feed the grid. Probably when my breaker tripped over here because I shorted it, then the Mega Revo saw that the, the, the grid went down and it tried to turn that breaker off, but it all happened so fast that there was still power flowing through it and because of the short over here and it caused an arc. And then that's what caused all my problems. I think next time I'm gonna be playing with something, I'll be a little more reminded about, you know, turning it off before I start playing with things and rewiring things. It's important.